Check and, and all of that. Numbers are all labeled. The the trick is going to be figuring out the right settings on the new board for the house and the monitor and and Zoom. No, at 10.
Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our God rise among us. Let it rise. Let it rise. everyone. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to First Christian Church. I'm going to invite you all to stand with us as we sing these first two songs. Again, thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday. Let us praise him.
Amen. You all may be seated. It is so good to see you here, and it is so good to see people we have not seen in a while. And I'm not going to call names because I don't want to call you out, but you know who you are. No. <laughs> It is so good to see so many of you here. Happy Easter, blessed Resurrection Day. Christ the Lord is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to First Christian Church here in Concord, California. We are one church in multiple locations as we gather together here in the sanctuary, as we gather on Zoom and on Facebook Live. We want you to know if you are visiting with us, and we are so glad that you are here, but if you are visiting with us, we want you to know a little bit about who we are. We believe that every single person is an equal and beloved child of the divine who deserves friendship and love and dignity and respect. Amen. That's right. We also are open and we are an open and affirming congregation, which means that we are open and affirming of absolutely everyone. We also strive to be an anti-racist congregation. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So welcome home. Will you please join me in the call to worship? Yesterday, we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all was lost. Yesterday, we thought Christ was gone. We have a reason to hope. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. Will you please join me in prayer? God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt clouded their minds. Negativity took root and hope vanished with a simple shake of their heads. As we return to this familiar text, help us to hear differently this morning. Open our ears so that we might hear the sound of alleluia's ringing through this text. Open up our minds that the mystery and joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open up our hearts so that we might believe the unbelievable. And like Peter in this hearing, may we move closer to you. God of the empty tomb, we are hungry for your good news. Speak to us now. With hope in our hearts, we listen and we pray. Amen. For thousands of years, candles have been lit to provide illumination, warmth, and comfort, and to engage the senses. At our church, we light candles during this special portion of our service, representing our individual prayers joined together in common petition to God. For those at home, we invite you to grab a candle and light it with us, remembering to blow it out when, uh, when you are done. For those in the sanctuary, uh, we invite you and your family to come up as the band sings and light a candle, or actually not as the band sings, as we have special music. My apologies. <laughs> we have the uh, candles up at the front here. Uh, in this sacred moment, we open our hearts to what God has for our lives, our homes, and our church body. Please join me in lighting the candle.
Wendy and Diane, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Yes, I have on heels. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know me, I don't normally wear heels. So it's Easter. I'm wearing heels. All right. <laughs> Thank you. It is that time when we get to laugh with one another and share the joy of the ways in which we have seen God at work this week. There are so many different ways. And so I want to invite first those who are online, um, Carrie, is there anyone online that has a sign of life? I don't see any hands. Okay. All right. Then here in the sanctuary, are there? Yes. Well, yesterday afternoon, there were about a thousand eggs laying around this area. <laughs> But the sign of life that just touched my heart was the laughter and the excitement of the people that were hiding those eggs. The halls were filled with just such joy and such happiness that it just filled my heart. And then as I walked to the car, I saw several cars parked of people that had formed a carpool to go up to Roseville to visit D Laird. And I thought, oh my goodness, this church has so much love for all ages, for all people, even when they move away, we hang on to them and share our love. But, but, but yesterday, I just wish you could have all heard the laughter and the fun that was going on in these halls. It was truly a sign of God's love. Uh oh, there we go. I'm not used to heels. I got to be careful. <laughs> I'm going to fall over. <laughs> No, it was. It was great. And we had somebody help me. I'm going to say we had at least 50 kids. At least, right? Tons of children. Tons of visitors. Most of these, you know, because our kids hid the eggs, so our kids weren't getting them. But, oh, they were so good. So good. So much fun. And fun to watch all these people run around the church. It was great. It was great. Hi. Hey. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, we've had another death in our family, and I'm dealing with that. And I was looking for quotes, and I, I found this one. And it says, hope is wishing something would happen. Faith is believing something will happen. Courage is making something happen. And I think it's time for all of us to have courage. And we are holding you in prayer. Are there, yes. Several weeks ago, I came with my granddaughter. Because they have to. Okay. Okay. I, I'm afraid of these things, but several years, several weeks ago, I came with Summer, who's become a, a lover of the church. And today I have her brother. So he's here with us too. Thank you. And Rylan, Rylan, Ryler, Ryler, Ryler gave me my corsage this morning. So, yeah, thank you. Yes, Michelle. Hello. Hi. Happy Easter. And I got your picture for you. Oh. Happy thank Easter. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, another sign of life is seeing people we have not seen in a long, long time. So welcome home. Welcome home. I, and all, yes, welcome home. All the people, all these folks that we've not seen. It's great. Welcome to our visitors. Well, 
Um, oh, no, no, okay. okay. She's 94 years old and still is just full of energy and life and love, and it is absolutely wonderful to see her. Oh, good, good. So thank you. We particularly to our friend for organizing all the meeting. Amen. 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 I don't want to have to get up. Um, yeah, a small group of us was able to go up and see her. Um, she was a member of the church for a long time, and uh, she moved away to Lincoln. But uh, yeah, it was fantastic. And she called when when I got back, and just she was almost at a loss for words and almost in tears. She was just so grateful for her friends, and um, she's made a lot of friends up there too. And in fact, they came. They, they usually have a a weekly Saturday group called Rummy Cube. And she had told them, but I guess they forgot. So just after we had arrived and we're getting everything ready, they knock on the door and they're like, oh my goodness. So we, we got to meet her new friends and they got to meet us. And it was just, yeah, she was just so grateful for, for friendship. So we, we should all remember that. We can keep in touch with people in many ways. So, Amen. Yes. I'll sit too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the... um. What happened this week was the uh, Good Friday service here, and it was amazing. We had stations, you know, we had different stations of the of the cross that we could, or stations of Peter that stations, we, of, Peter this time. stations of Peter this time, where we could, you know, do the reading and then look at the pictures you know, of the artists that were displaying, and it was just really brought me a, a deep connection with it, with the. Uh, um, understanding Peter and understanding what was going on. So I, I that's my sign of life this week. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Babies are staying in. Okay. I guess they're not babies anymore. They're my babies. <laughs> okay. I just want to well, transition. Uh, give a big thank you to Chris. Chris Yates is on uh, here this morning from Sacramento uh, for organizing this show. Thank you for signing up for coordinating that. Um, all the Ed Hansen and all the kids have been raising God. I'm not throwing the eggs in the bushes too deep. <laughs> Uh, so if you turn over to this morning, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is a great thing. Yeah, it was. It was wonderful. For those of you who are visiting with us today, um, there are prayer cards like this in the back of your pew. If you'd like to have a prayer um, that you would like included in our weekly newsletter, just simply put it in here. If it's a confidential prayer request, one that you would just like for me and the elders to know, simply mark it that way. If you are online, it's the same thing, except you're going to put it in the chat. And, um, and then if it's a private one, um, a confidential one, send it to Carrie, um, who's the Zoom elder today, um, and she will make sure that the elders and I receive that. Um, there will come a time at the end of the, of the pastoral prayer that I will invite you to say the Lord's Prayer. We have a variety of versions, and all of them are correct. There is one, if you don't know it by heart, that's okay. There's a version in your bulletin. Um, feel free to use that or pray from the, the prayer that is in your memory. Will you join me in prayer? God of today and tomorrow, God of the garden and the tomb, God of our faith and our doubt, we are running toward you. Like Peter on that Easter morning, we simply cannot stay away. So with beating hearts and wide eyes, we have arrived in this sanctuary, bringing with us our questions, our hopes, our joys, and our concerns. 
hear us as we draw as we pray these prayers lift them up lift up our prayer concerns to you hear us as we pray we hold in our prayers kelly peterman in the loss of her mother Ashwatthama and Prema. God of the dawn, we start with our hopes. Thank you for the gifts of this world that instill buoyancy in us. Thank you for the curiosity of children, for the sound of your people singing in unison, for crowded tables and neighborly kindness, for the sun after the rain, for the spring after the frost, for loss, for love after loss, and for faith after doubt. Like Peter, we have countless reasons to hold on to hope. Highest among them is the joy and the promise of this day. Thank you for these holy breadcrumbs on the journey of faith. However, before we found ourselves in the garden, before the joy and the alleluias of this day, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. And so for those things that erode our hope, for the things that stitch doubt and fear into our hearts, we ask for your comforting hand. Wrap your arms around all who are still locked in that upper room. Wrap your arms around all who cannot find healing after their longest night. Wrap your arms around all who look for reasons to hope but cannot find those breadcrumbs amidst reasons to grieve. Holy God, like Peter, fan the flames of our faith. Like Peter, invite us to step out of our boats. And like Peter, use us to care for those in need, to tell your story, and to build a better world. We remember and we believe. So with awestruck, wild beating, grateful hearts, we run toward you. With feet in the garden and eyes on the cross, we pray to you, saying the words your son taught us to pray, saying, our creator who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Easter video. It's Meg first. Okay. Oh, here we go. I'm first. Okay, great. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, as we kind of come to our time of sharing our gifts, uh, it's good to remember that the greatest offering comes from God. His love is unending. The work of ministry to which this congregation is called is not to build a shrine to a dead God, but to, shred, er, but to spread this good news, knowing Jesus is alive and continually invites us to faithfully follow. Our offerings, whether they be financial, sharing of our talents or our time, help us share that news of fruitful living. 
Today, we also collect our special Easter offering, which supports the work of our general ministries. Overseas personnel, our pension fund, home missions, and so much more depend on this offering. If you have heard the story of a global mission partner, a national benevolent ministry, new church starts, or partnership ministry of this church, know this offering is one which makes a big difference. When we talk about our worldwide presence, we support that with the Easter special offering. When we collectively seek to share the good news of Jesus Christ and offer Christ's presence, we support that work with today's special offering. Bring what you've prepared to give, knowing this God who brought life in the beginning, brought life out of Jesus's tomb, and still offers life to each of us today. This life-assuring God goes with us as we seek to walk in the way of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Because of your generosity to Disciples Mission Fund, more than 70 ministries of wholeness are your hands and feet from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. Because of your generosity, you stand in solidarity with global partners. Because of you, ministries of care and compassion abound, including tables of shared concerns. Because of your generosity, you are there when volunteers are needed to help build and rebuild. Because of you, children learn the stories of Jesus and adults grow in their spiritual lives. Because of you, we continue to build bridges of hope and understanding between cultures. Because of your generosity, we are connected to ecumenical partners across the world. Because of you, leaders are grown from camps to seminaries and beyond. Thank you. Thank you for the love you have shared with God's children through your gifts. Please consider continuing your support with a generous gift to Disciples Mission Fund. <laughs>
Can you hear? Oh, there we go. Great. Okay, will you please pray with me then? Bless, O oh God, all we've offered, that in our seeking and our serving, your work through this congregation might illuminate paths and make the way clear for each one of us and for all who seek you. Guide us as we use these gifts to show your presence to the world you love, the world for which Jesus was resurrected. Amen. There we go. Good morning and happy Easter to everybody. Uh, the scripture today is from uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, the resurrection of Jesus. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the 11 and to all the rest. And that was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But the words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up, Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. May God bless the reading of his word. For those of you who haven't been with us throughout all of Lent, you may wonder why we keep talking about Peter. And that's because our whole Lenten series this, this year has been called Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. And so we've been journeying with Peter, the very human, very flawed, very amazing Peter uh, throughout this whole season. God bless you. Today, today is filled with hope from the past, hope realized in the present, and hope for the future. Today is a day of hope. It was early in the morning. And the women, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and all of the other women, it was like all of our disciples' women came together. They had hoped. They had hoped that Jesus was the one for whom they had been praying, the one for whom the one about whom it had been prophesied, the one they believed and wanted so desperately to be the anointed one of God, the Messiah. They had hoped. And now they are headed to a tomb. The women and the other disciples know about tombs. We all do, don't we? They are sites of memory. They evoke stories and a way of keeping alive those people who have died physically, but keep them present with us in our memories, in time, and in space, and in place. They brought their hope. They thought their hope was a thing of the past. The women who followed Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem had been traumatized. Can you imagine what they witnessed on Good Friday? They were traumatized. And they were doing the last 
final act of love that they could offer to Jesus. They had watched as as the body of Jesus was taken down from the cross. They watched as Joseph of Arimathea wrapped Jesus's body in linen. They watched as he carefully placed the body in a tomb that no that was hewn out of a rock that no one had ever been laid in before. They watched all of that. And then they went home to prepare the spices that they needed to complete the proper burial for the body. These practices were a visceral way of them living out and experiencing and moving through their grief. It is Saturday when they're doing, they're preparing these spices. And now it is Sunday morning. And as the women approach the tomb, they are focused solely on bringing to completion the proper burial for Jesus to bring some closure to their grief. But as they get closer, as they approach, they realize that the stone that had sealed Jesus' body in the tomb had now been rolled away. How'd that happen? And then when they look in and they realize the body is not there, how did that happen? This is good news. Or is it? They weren't sure. They were perplexed. Is their hope being realized today for real? Or is this some cruel joke? They were not sure what to think or what to do. But then through the messengers at the tomb... The women remember Jesus' assurance and run back to the disciples with the news that the tomb is empty and Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead just like he said he would. And the disciples look at them and say, "Uh uh-huh. Now the scripture says, the scripture translates that word as an idle tale. The disciples didn't just dismiss them, didn't just disregard them. They just didn't, downright did not believe them at all. Some translations will render their reaction as an idle tale or foolish talk or nonsense, but the real meaning of the word in Greek is garbage. It's garbage. The women announce Jesus' promises have been fulfilled, and the response from the ones who were closest to Jesus say, yeah, that's a bunch of hooey, or that's a bunch of rubbish, or you can fill in your own expletive. Michael Joseph Brown, who was the president of Payne Seminary, reminds us that human history is rife with such overt discrimination. Less than a century ago, women and people of color were not considered credible witnesses in American courts. The history of civil rights in the United States is replete with examples of women and men whose truthfulness was discounted or disregarded because an accident of birth made them something other than white male. In short, certain people throughout history, simply because of gender or ethnicity, have been branded deceitful and lacking in credibility for no other reason than prevailing social prejudices. End quote. I I talked about it last week, but I was a week ahead. 
Today is Transgender Day of Visibility. We don't want to continue the mistakes of our past by ignoring people who are different, people who think differently, who look differently, who love differently, who embody differently. We want to honor and love and respect all people, especially on Resurrection Day. We find ourselves living in an age of idle tales, filled with many questions. What are we to believe? What is the truth? And what is a wild conspiracy theory? Who are we to believe? And in what or whom shall we have hope? I suspect that many think that the Easter message is just one more message, the message of resurrection, the message of new life, the message of newness and, and, and recreation is, as Shakespeare's Macbeth would say, a tale full of sound and fury signifying nothing. These words seemed to them to be garbage. Even so, even so, Easter is not a day when we should remain silent. Easter is not a day when we should hide who we are and what we believe. Easter is not a day when we denigrate other people. It's not us, to, we're never supposed to do that. But it is a day when we can proclaim with glee and with joy that Christ has risen today. We should also not be surprised when people continue in the footsteps of the disciples and say, that's a bunch of hooey. The resurrection of Jesus is perplexing. It is mysterious and it is amazing. And it is as mysterious to us today as it was to those women on Easter, on that first Easter Sunday morning, that first resurrection morning. Their hope is real. They did not let uncertainty rule their lives. They shared the brilliance of their experience with others, even those who did not believe them. And their testimony their testimony, even though it did not convince all of them, was enough to spark Peter's imagination. Peter, in Luke's version, is the only one of the male disciples who gets up and runs to the tomb. I can hear him saying with every step, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Peter, Peter is showing us that there is a both and, that we have a both and kind of faith. A faith that persists even after mountain peaks and deep valleys. Beginning on Monday, Thursday, Peter drew his sword. Peter denied Christ not once, not twice, but three times. Peter was not there when Jesus died. And, and Peter ran to the tomb. So all of that bad stuff, naughty stuff, disregarding stuff that Peter did, it's okay. We're human. We have reasons to doubt and get angry and get frustrated. And Jesus or, or Peter ran to the tomb. Peter shows us that we can always begin again, that we can always add an and when we think that our story has come to an end, we know too many people who we believed were at death's doorstep who hung on, 
and who are well and who have survived. There is always an and. There is always hope. When he hears, when, when, when Peter peers into the empty tomb and sees the linen cloth, he is filled with awe. And he safely arrives back home, which is part of our, our ongoing hymn, right? Come thou found. He safely arrives at home filled with amazement. Now, he doesn't go back and vindicate the women. That's a whole other issue. But Peter goes home wondering. And it is in that wondering that the meaning of resurrection lives. Resurrection only makes sense when we remain amazed and marveling and wondering at the love of God that has reversed death itself. That profound and deep love that can change the whole world, that can change each one of us. Finally, I want to come back to the messengers at the, at the tomb for just a moment. As we hope in the future, we need to turn away from what is not there, focusing instead on that good news. As the angelic messengers at the tomb ask the women, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He isn't here. He has risen. He has burst the bonds of time and space. Yet we, you and I, continue to focus on the unexplainable empty tomb, looking for him among the dead. The tale of Jesus' birth and death and resurrection can seem like an idle tale, can seem like garbage to folks who don't believe it. It is a story of a king born in a stable, an innocent man arrested and executed, a tomb that is empty, astounding, unbelievable, weird from beginning to end. He is not here. He has risen. He is our hope. To believe in the resurrection of Jesus takes a lot of faith and courage. We are not asked, you and I are not asked to explain the resurrection. We are not, we are not asked to provide proof of the resurrection or to make a case for the resurrection. But it is more than saying yes to the claim made by the women and eventually by the men in the Easter story. It is at the same time saying no, saying no to the power of death and destruction that surrounds us. It is saying no to those things that would hurt, that would, that would seek to tear us away from one another. Instead, like Peter, we are invited to live in wonder, to live in the belief that the God of resurrection can truly change the world. It is an acknowledgement that Jesus' ministry was a ministry of inclusion, not only of women, but also of Gentiles and of persons regarded by the majority as unworthy. In, a place of the in place of the bad news we hear and the bad experiences we have, we make the claim today and every day that there is a sustaining power, that God is that sustaining power who brings life out of death, reconciliation out of conflict, and, 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 and new life, new opportunities, new possibilities where doors have been closed to us before. There has, been, there has been marvelous testimony throughout the ages that this is absolutely true. Beginning from the earliest witnesses of Easter to today.
to commit ourselves to the claim, to their claim, opens up the door to new life for ourselves and for acts of love and reconciliation throughout the world. We are resurrection people. We are the people of hope and faith. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you have been worshiping here at First Christian Church, whether you are online or here in the sanctuary, and you would like to make First Christian Church your new church home, come on as we sing one more time, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. If I don't, you know what, I'm going to take these off in a second. Stay. <laughs> this is holy ground, so I can be barefoot. Let us stand up. of every blessing to thy heart to sing thy praise streams of When the women reached that tomb on, this, on that first Easter morning, they were met by angels who told them, He is not here, but remember what he told you. I can't help but wonder there in the garden as the sun rose over the trees if they remembered it all. I wonder if they remembered Jesus telling 5,000 people plus to sit together in the grass and passing out fresh fish and, and, and bread. I wonder if they remember how he stopped in the middle of the crowd to ask, who touched my robe? I wonder if they remember how he ate with Zacchaeus or scooped up children onto his knee. I wonder if they remembered him teaching in the temple, telling people to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I wonder if they remembered how the wind stopped 
at the sound of his voice. I wonder if they remembered how he washed their feet and said, this is my body broken for you. And this is the cup of love and justice and the new covenant poured out for you. I wonder if they remembered it all. Friends, just like the women at the tomb, we need to be reminded as well. The suffering of the world can erode the muscle memory of grace and welcome that we hold. Don't let it. Come to this table and remember. This, my friends, is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women and youth and children come from the north and the south and the east and the west to gather at this table, this table of love and justice and welcome. Remember how Jesus fed everyone. Remember how none were turned away. Remember how he said, do this in remembrance of me. Come and remember, there is room for you here. As you come forward, one of the deacons will release each row, but as you come forward, take your elements and go back to your seat. We will all eat and drink together. If you cannot come forward, don't worry about it. One of the deacons will bring the elements back to you. Just, sign just signal so we know to bring that to you. Come, for all things are ready.
What a beautiful service. I almost yeah. hate to interrupt for announcements. <laughs> Um, just wanted to say a huge, big thank you to everyone who helped make this Holy Week possible. There was so many things that were going on this week and um, everything was just so beautiful. Thank you, Pastor Leslie, for that amazing sermon. All of us online really appreciated it. I'm sure in the sanctuary, everybody was uplifted by it as well. Special thanks to Diane and Wendy. What a treat to have such amazing, beautiful music. Um, and thank you to the tech people who made it so seamless. We heard everything online today. It was gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really nice. Um, so just a few announcements. We don't have very many, but, um, these are the ways that you can stay connected with us. If you have not yet signed up for the intersections, please do so. It's our weekly newsletter. It comes out on Thursdays has all the information you would ever need to know about what's going on in our church. Um, if you are not yet a part of that, email Andy Raymond at Andy at ConcordFCC.net. You can follow us on social media. We are at ConcordFCC across all of the platforms, and our website is ConcordFCC.net. Um, this was a big week, and this is well-deserved. Tomorrow, the church office is closed. Nobody Amen. come by. Don't bother Andy. Don't bother Pastor Leslie. <laughs> Nobody come by the church. We will both be asleep. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Good. So uh, no, no office hours tomorrow. At Tuesday at 930, the walking group is going to meet at Heather Farms in Walnut Creek. So um, head over there if you're a part of that. On Wednesday, April 3rd at 7, um, the adult spiritual formation group is meeting in the plan back room and also on zoom. So if you're mm -hmm. a part of that, make a note of it. Yeah. And then, that's it. After the closing song, stick around, visit with your friends. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, Carrie. Thank you. The song means uh, one more piece by, by Diane. So. Yes. So after we do all I know, Stay. Don't get up and leave because Wendy and huh? No, they cannot. I don't think so. <laughs> Wendy and Diane are going to do some really beautiful, some more really beautiful music. So stay and then you can go after they're done. Receive this benediction. Well, no, before I give you the benediction, if you are visiting with us today, thank you so much for sharing Resurrection Sunday with us. Please know that whether you are related to Diane or Wendy, you can still come back. Whether you are related, whether you're not related to anybody, you can still come back. We are so excited that you are here and really do, all joking aside, really do want to welcome you to come back any Sunday at 10 a.m. Now receive the benediction. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, to speak of your faith. And when the world feels like it is falling apart, may you hear God's voice deep within you saying, take heart, it is I, be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed, in both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. After they fin, after Wendy and Diane finish, go in peace, trusting in God's good news. Amen.